B-Side Word. Hello guys and welcome to the B-Side Word once again. We are a group of friends from around the world and we will be sharing our thoughts on second page news. Today I'm here with the usual crew. It's me, Maxi, and there is Alex. Yo. There's Dev. Hello. Emma. Hey. CJ. Hello. And today we are joined by two very special guests. We have Dev's cousin who is named Judd. Hey. And we have uh, Alex's friend from our my hometown, actually, Banbury, called Niall. What's up? All right. I reckon the next article will be Maxi's. Okay. Uh, does Are you guys familiar with the Jeremy Carl show? Yes. Kind of, yeah. No. Okay. Do you know what? Uh, the Jerry, is it the Jerry show in, the, in America? Jerry Springer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerry Springer, um, yep. Yeah. So basically what they do, the Jeremy Carl show, is they get families that tend to be very poor sort of families that have bad attitudes and then they get them on the show and it's always like, my cousin slept with my <laughs> grandma's ex-sister and <laughs> now I, I want ah! my mortgage money. I don't know, they're always crazy <laughs> stories which you, you have to read a couple of times. It's like my sister's dad's brother and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, like it's always something weird it's something in the family or so they just basically find people and they normally come on in like tracksuit bottoms and not their hair not and they just always purposely choose people that look sort yeah. of rough yeah you know and then the jeremy carl show uh yeah that's what they do they go on and then they talk about their problems and they always do a lie detector at the end and then it like goes up in i'm just trying to quickly uh, explain the yeah, jeremy yeah, carl yeah. Show. <laughs> hopefully you all got that uh, anyway but somebody on the jeremy carl show committed suicide after being on it and now the TV show has been axed. Like they just stopped. It's not running anymore. Oh my like God. That, they just made a decision for it to stop being running. Um, and then so, the article I actually put in was about someone that used to work on the show as a runner. And what I didn't realize was people like their crew used to purposely egg on these like guests to try and get them. Like when you go out there, make sure you tell them like what you really think of them and like do anything yeah, 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 you have yeah, yeah. to do, like kind of encouraging violence and stuff. Yeah. And, that's I was just crazy. interested for you guys to think, how is it that, that on TV, we literally just put people on and we just try and laugh at the fact their life is like really bad, basically. Um, it I makes us all feel better know. about ourselves, doesn't it? I don't know. Like that's, I think that's sort of why people like watching it. Not, not like act consciously going, I'm going to watch this so I feel good about myself, but it does make them feel better about their own situation. Do, do you like Jerry Springer? Did uh, I used to love Jerry Springer. Rilla. 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 <laughs> Michael. Well, Jeremy I... Kyle's a weird one. I've only ever watched it a couple of times. But when, when you watch it, like, he's obviously there to give some ad advice to these people and that. But every time mm. I saw it, he would just get to the point where he would just start screaming at them. And it's just like, all right. Who? Like, Jeremy? Uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, it was Jeremy Who Kyle. Would, yeah. what, he would scream at his guest. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, like he's, he's, he's quite aggressive. Yeah, like, he... yeah like, so obviously they've got issues in their life and like they do need fixing, but his approach wasn't to be like, okay, so what I think we need to do here is this. And he'd be like, you, you're like a piece of crap. Like you need to do this to sort out yourself. Yeah. And it's just like, all right. Oh my gosh. Shut out. <laughs> I didn't know that. I did see part of the article where it says like they used to like put them up in a hotel room and give them like free access to the mini bar so they'd get drunk and stuff the night before and just stupid wow. stuff like just that. Just to and make like, the perfect storm. Yeah, and then they'd keep them separated in like completely separate coloured corridors so they, they the guests wouldn't run into each other because um, they didn't want any fights off air. Like they wanted to catch all the fights on air. Um, and then like what Maxie said, yeah, they'd sort of like the last words to them before going on would be like, Remember, they called you a whatever or like in the dressing room yeah. when they're getting ready, they're like, oh, I heard that she called you a like, do you know what I mean? And just to get them all <sighs> like rather. Like yeah. School. And they would make that up, know. right? They were just like, you should have, you should have heard what your ex said about, it, said to me about you just then. And then they would oh. say something. And then apparently it was just completely made up according to this runner who was on the show. That's crazy. That is crazy. And uh, then, and they weren't allowed to have, uh, they weren't allowed to bring their own cigarettes and stuff, but like the staff would have to have a pack of cigarettes on them all the time. And that was a tool they used now and again to help them calm down. Huh. Which is like... <laughs> it, 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 Judd's right. It's like high school, right? But very... Um, intensified. Intensified. Yeah. Which is strange because it was like daytime TV in England. Mm. 
Yeah, Springer was daytime. Yeah. I used to love Springer. Maury's, what, uh, like Maury's daytime. daytime. Uh, Maury, yeah. Maury Povich is daytime. But you guys enjoy watching it? Or did you? I did. No, I, I did. I did. Did you watch it? Yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy. Mum watches it. Yeah. So I, like, I did. I did enjoy I it. Catch a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dev. Dev's know. casting a judging eye. I just. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I'm judging you too. <laughs> Don't think I'm just judging Emma. I'm judging you too. <laughs> I'm judging you, Emma. <laughs> Maybe you should have watched so it. So one of the <laughs> things I've seen about this, I can't remember the the name of the show. It's one of those like sex on the beach or <laughs> anyway, Love like, Island. Some, some Love Island is that's the one. Yes. Where two people have committed suicide since that. <laughs> huh? Or yeah. two of the people on that have committed suicide. And people are saying, why haven't they cancelled that show? I, I didn't know, know people had yeah. committed I, suicide I just think from one's that. died. I don't know if there's actually been a suicide. One died. I know that for sure. It wasn't a suicide. Uh, uh, and then the other, but the other one. So Love Island. Two, w- that's what they were saying. There's two people have died from that versus Jeremy Carl's just had one in 12 or 14 years or something. Hmm. I didn't even hear that. I love that show. Oh. There's there's loads of like with things like Love Island, people get because they come like famous instantly yeah. straight after. Um, they've got to learn how to like deal with the world. Yeah, in a new light and like they don't know how to, so they get all these problems, and that goes out on the news like a lot. Oh, that's sad. Mm. That's like I guess it's something like a a massive change in your life, like winning the lotto. People can't handle that, right? Like, so any big change, mm. people find it hard to handle. Yeah, that's Often. true. Especially when it's like you get so much attention because of it as well. Like, you can't really hide. Yeah, you like, think hide. of, like, yeah. Big Brother or, like, Love Island, whatever. They go in and they're, like, nobody. And they come out and everyone on the street's like, oh, my God, it's you. I hate you. Or I love you. I mean, you know I mean? guess we need to think about it because soon when this blows up and goes big, we're all going to be in that position. Yeah, you know? I'm ready. Exactly. I'm ready. Far out. We're we're ready. Ready. I'm ready. I hope everyone listens to it and doesn't watch it because then they won't actually recognize us. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not going to recognize me, I guess. <laughs> CJ's, CJ's <laughs> smart. There so you go. Your hands, you'll CJ. walk down the street and you'll say something to your mate and then someone will stop and go, hold on. One minute <laughs> warning. <laughs> I recognize that voice. <laughs> they turn around and they see Jay gold necklace, gold bracelet, Rolexes. <laughs> see a t shirt major saying, One minute warning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My catchphrase. <laughs> I, think, I think that'll go off. That yeah, we've got to sell that. T shirts with one minute warning. Yeah, on I it. like that. <laughs> I like that. And just a hand. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll have another T-shirt with Aaron, uh, Alex's massive hand counting down. <laughs> to to calm down. Down. Oh, the countdown hand. <laughs> uh, they, they, they never five, make the uh, five on the No, no, we we'll just get five T-shirts. On one's like this. One's like this. One's uh, like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can set it to bands with five people in it and just hope they don't fall out of each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. have a but if you have a bass player and a guitarist, you might. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a not, bass player or a guitarist. Not naming any names, though. Not naming any yeah, names. Yeah. Just, just the, random course, bass players yeah, and guitarists. Confidentiality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do we? Uh... By the way, it wasn't really a Yeah, we went. Room. We went way off topic <laughs> right at the end there. No, it's not. What it's do you still, mean? It's what was not the one, how, how long we got left? It was about Jeremy Kyle. Oh, and then we start talking about t-shirts. So, do you think my, it's... my question then? My yep. question is: Do you think they, it's a right decision to cut the show? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Like, of course. Like, I've no, never seen the show, no so I don't know. Any objections? Well, Jerry based... Springer. Do you I don't think it should Springer? ever have yeah. been on TV to start with. Do you think Jerry Springer? So, if someone committed suicide because of what happened on the show, they should cut the whole show. I don't think, personally, it's got nothing to do with the suicide. I just yeah. think the entire concept of the show is a terrible idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking, what do you think, CJ? Because you liked it. Um, Probably not. Probably not what? <laughs> probably not cancel it? Yeah, not cancel it. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm thinking like, hmm. But then I realized no one could see me, so no, they shouldn't cut it. <laughs> 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 so you would like you want to would you want to go on it like there was if someone I, if from I was Bambi ever was asked on the to Jeremy Carl show I'm and they were like proud to be on it like I'm going on it nah you'd have been invited wouldn't you what's that someone from Bambi 
Or went on it. Really? Really? Yeah. Huh? I mean, yeah. Banbury is that kind of uh, town. By the way, one Jamie minute of warning, Carter. for real. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like every town. <laughs> I don't know if they should like fully cut it, but I didn't know that's how they treated their people. So like, they just have to have a, they've got to change things up. But whether I don't know if they should fully cut it, but maybe it's obviously how it was is not right. Hmm? Did you research the guests a bit more? They have, and that's why they no, chose they've them. they picked them on purpose, I guess. That's yeah. what I, I, does the show benefit anyone except for the viewers from an entertainment standpoint? Like, is that all that is that the only value of the show? Entertainment? Yes. Yeah. They no. They claim their support team. They claim they have a support team. But it sounds like they're anti-support, if anything. Yeah. Which yeah. Is weird. So, but they claim so the idea is they get together, they air it, and then they they like help them move forward afterwards, and they have yeah. like a. A, sp- a specific care team to look after the guests after yeah. the show. Oh, do is, they? Have, have or that's what they claim. It? I, I'm not so saying like, we have to. I'm just curious. Has anyone looked in to see if that's actually happening and if this had an impact on these people? Yeah, they do. Um, they'll they'll do retrospectives. So if someone's like been addicted to like heroin or like whatever for X years, they'll do a retro, and now they're off it. And okay. Oh, so that's good. Because there's a show he called. Um, <laughs> Quite <this dumb. laughs> There's a show called Married at First Sight. I don't know if it's in England as well. I'm not sure. I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, seen the, I've seen the American one. Uh, like I've not seen the American one. I've only, yeah. I, I watched the Aussie one and it's hilarious. Love it. That's but hilarious. I can't stand that show. This year's hilarious. one was like, it's so different to what it started off as. Like, this year was just drama, like, from like episode one drama. Anyway, I saw like they're doing a 60 minutes thing on it. This this woman's come out and usually they have like a, n- what do you call like non-disclosure type thing. Yeah. But this woman's coming out on 60 minutes and she was like, I nearly like committed suicide. She was like, they claim that they match you up to your, like that they've had all these meetings with you and they match you up for your, you know, the perfect guy. And she was like, in reality, they didn't even meet me until after they'd matched me up and stuff like this. Like it's all fake. But, and. What on TV? It's all fake on TV. <laughs> oh, and like most I didn't know that. Of, uh, loads of them are like hired actors. Oh, apparently there was this show called um I don't know what it's called, like <laughs> Dating Gay or something. Yeah. Um, and it was like this gay bachelor and he wanted to find a boyfriend, and literally something like eighty percent of the the men were straight playing gay. gay. I don't know. <laughs> I fall for it every time. Do you, do mm. you think Reality TV shows are forever, or do you think this is like a period of time? Where I'm hoping it's bigger? a period of time. It's, it's a long period. Be, I think they're going to be forever just coming up with sort of new things. Like at the moment, there's um, Lego Masters. I was talking to CJ about it earlier, which is awesome. It's and like Lego it's reality, mad. so it's, like but Masters. it's teams that have to like so, build Lego, build stuff out of Lego, and like all the kids like it, and it's sort of yeah, it's different. So maybe like when you say like will... reality TV shows, do you mean like like I like to I like watch stuff about interior design for instance. Does that go under reality TV? Yeah, or that, yeah. yeah. When does. people have a comp. Oh, then they'll be thinking, forever. Like, humans like watching humans, right? That's yeah. what yeah. you do. Yeah. So all like the cooking shows, yeah, Master Chef, I mean, all it, that. Yeah. At like least from it. this could just be an age thing, and maybe I just wasn't aware. But I, I think it was around the two thousands reality TV became like way more common versus produced TV. Yeah, like I think, yeah. and it's Big easier to make the first to kick off, like the reality TV sort of. I think it was Big Brother. Big, Big Brother yeah, was Big Brother. awesome. That's, that's what I said. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't hear him. Yeah, didn't hear you. And remember it's on like, Fox, <laughs> uh, on Sky, <laughs> there was the with the Big Brother, there was the twenty-four hour viewing option, and like yeah. me and my mum would just watch it, even if there's no one in the room, we'd just be watching. <laughs> Remember that? What? Yes, I do yes. remember that. I was like, I, I was like, who are these people watching Twenty Four Hour Big Brother? That was yeah, me. And it yeah. was you, Emma. Yeah, I could it was me. Yeah. I'd be like, I've met one like, in real life. Oh, I wonder what they're, what, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder when they're going to walk into the room. When they walk into the room, like, oh, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, let's go with your article next, Alexander. All right, so 
I have an article that I found. I actually saw it posted on Instagram as a picture first, and then I went to go find an article off the back of that. Um, but the article goes that a man went to South African KFC and for a year claimed to be from head office and he was there to test and verify their methods and everything <laughs> and like had to taste the food. So he ate free chicken for a year, basically. <laughs> I would sack <laughs> everyone in that KFC. That he I like this guy. I like him. <laughs> it was un- until no, but CJ, I think it was different to KFC. Just go around. <laughs> what, someone from head office arrested him? What? No, no, the, the, they ended up finding out because he's been scamming. He's fraud, isn't it? Yeah. So he ended up getting arrested. But yeah, he claimed to be from head office. So it was just eating free KFC for a year. Let's find so out what KFC apparently it is. says he used to, like, he was dedicated to this cause, guys. He would get a limo to the KFC <laughs> and what? dress up in a what suit. Just, why don't just buy KFC? <laughs> it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper, it's cheaper. cheaper. It's cheaper. It's cheaper like, just to get the... Just be real confident, like, <laughs> but who would send their, like, checker, like, in a limo <laughs> to a fast food place? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm a <your> checker. <laughs> <laughs> Please put the chicken in my limo. <laughs> <laughs> I want some limo chicken. <laughs> yeah. would you, do you think you'd question that if you were to? I think because he was in, like, a really, like, like Sue and he's like, yeah, I'm here from such and such. Do you remember like it, we were talking the other week about confidence? Like if you just walk in or if you've got a clipboard, anyone will sort of like let you in. Or... So if That's I walk into the KFC with a, with a clipboard, a was that a ladder? Was it a maxi? <laughs> free chicken. Free chicken. <laughs> try, have it. A limo and a suit. try it. Try it. Hello. <laughs> I'm from head office. We're sort of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have any of you ever worked retail before? Yes. Yes. I worked in KFC. Would you be fooled by Ooh. this? Man, Maxi Insider at Instagram. I probably, uh, I probably wouldn't care enough either way. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yeah, come <laughs> like, try it. All right, have some KFC then. Imagine like, like you're if, all nervous. It'd be the manager. If, like, it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be allowed to give out free food unless I told my like the site manager, and then he he would or she would be the person to decide. So you have to fool the the that person. No, but, but this is different. That doesn't he necessarily wasn't like, mean they're like. He wasn't ordering and getting it like taken to his table. He'd go out back, walk around, and like. Hmm, okay. And then he'd be like, right, I've got to try this. Oh, bit. really? I've got to try this. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like That's he was cool. more like walking around up back and like, right, I've got to try this. You know, it's got to be this certain way. But apparently he knew what he was talking about. So they reckon he used to work there as well. Make me a burger. Uh, Let's try the quality of your burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you get away with like, if, if you've worked in retail, like, you know, about, like mystery shoppers. Yeah. Yes. So like you, it's always in the back of your mind that you yeah. could be sort of, Someone yeah. coming in to check on you at some point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. I signed up to do mystery shopping. I remember your retail job. Wasn't it the teddy bear place? <laughs> <laughs> Debbie used to work in a teddy I bear. I remember shop. every go- all the other guys oh, gave like girls the, free the teddy bears for years. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Is that why they closed down? <laughs> Shut up. I remember I once arrived late for a date. I had a I'm sorry teddy bear. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know how hard like, it is to be drop, a male. Just drops dev into things every week. In in the teddy bear yeah. store, do you know? Like you going up to kids and going, do you do you like? Do you want a teddy bear, little fella? <laughs> do you want this? Te- I'm like, I was like, I'll just be at the counter. This is you creepy old man. <laughs> like the, honestly, no mother, no mum realized I worked there. What like, do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they, check that the kids away. Like they, <laughs> they look at me and like purposely go somewhere else to talk like the other <laughs> staff. I'm like, oh, wow, man. And I didn't even, I think I gave, honestly, I think I gave uh, like the first 10 teddies free because I couldn't work the cash register. <laughs> I was like, bah, 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 only I knew. Because like oh the manager goodness. went on, um, man, ma- manager went on lunch and I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah bag, no receipt. <laughs> no receipt didn't get charged it was just like it was it was bad it was very very bad yeah. it was very bad I wonder how many things we could get away with if we just turned up to places with like a lot of confidence and then just started the demanding stuff I did yeah, yeah there like was a challenge a, I saw a video like, right? yeah. where it was like two guys with a vest they had like a high-vis vest and like a clipboard yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this this was last week or the last week, week before no this was ages ago what was it 
Uh, I don't know. It was just guys sneaking into places. <laughs> was that the um, rave place? Is that no. where they jumped in the bin? No. Oh no, this was this was like on Facebook. Oh, okay. Um, so they wore high vis vest and they would sneak into like a movie. They so first they would do a movie. And they'd be like, oh, we just need to check up on um cinema three or something like that. And they let them walk. I watched the movie because they're wearing a vest. Because they're wearing a vest. And then they did like a <laughs> like a restaurant, I think as well. Yeah. Like oh, we need to see the back, you know, the kitchen for inspection or something like that. And they they let them walk. Then they did like a like a theme park, like a big theme park, and then they just walked through the front gates. Like, oh wow! Wow! Yeah. wow. I and, watched a video where a fully grown man, like, got himself in in a buggy, and like you could only see his head. So it's like a, <laughs> like a, like a pram. Yeah, a pram. <laughs> so you could only see the guy's head, um, and he was wheeled in to a theme park. By like his mate. <laughs> oh, I think I do was, remember. Like, that. Like, I don't know. I don't know if people looked at him and just thought it was like a really weird baby. Or, like, oh my god! <laughs> but it's like um, that bus, one that you one. showed Ugly me. Kid. The guy. I don't know if you guys have seen it. This kid who does like he he scams his way into things. Like he, he scammed his way into the Anthony Joshua fight. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Like so he makes um, yeah. he like makes a fake pass and everything like that and like. He, he documents the whole thing on YouTube, like his video, with the Anthony Joshua one. Was it, where was it? It was in like Wales? I put it, it was like, like yeah, it's Cardiff. It was O2. It was, it was in Cardiff. Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, it's, you know, a massive fight, big stadium. He gets through, he ends up going through the back and like, he ends up taking a picture. It like, oh. at rings. he's in yeah, the ring. He in gets the ring. in the ring. He's like wow. next to Anthony Joshua. And this guy scammed his entire way through. That same, the, that same guy who snuck into the Anthony Joshua fight, did that as like he, he planned so the story is they took that there was like a fashion week in london and they took one of their friends and wrapped him in like like a bin bag and like the pink cleaning gloves gloves <laughs> what? This, yeah um sent him to fashion week and planned out like the social media and it picked up and it flew and this guy was wearing like <laughs> pink gloves like he he looked stupid but it ran with the media he was like in the news it was nuts oh my god <laughs> you just gotta have basically balls just, and basically like taking the mick out of the whole industry <laughs> yeah confidence only gets you so far because skills has something to say and you know who i'm referring to alex no oh Mandela. Yeah, I have no idea. What <laughs> Mandela sign language man. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we talked about him the other week, but Mandela sign language man. The, he had confidence, Wait. but he did yeah, not he have had, the skills. He had confidence that he could not <laughs> sign. Could I, uh, could I ask who knew who Emma was talking about? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> no one. When she turned to you and she said, "You know who I who, who, who I am." Mean. I was thinking, which one of our friends you know is a scammer? That was very Donald Trumpy of you, there, Emma. Just assuming, yeah, like, you uh, know, on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Ernest. You know. <laughs> you know. You know. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Guys. You know who we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> the Mandela I, I, Sign Language when you said guy. It, like, <laughs> I saw. I kept my mouth shut. I was in who my head. I'm thinking like, have I, have, did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> we all missed something, including Ernest. Because he was thinking, who the hell do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know when I laugh Brilliant. too much, I cry. You know this oh. article. You know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it wasn't even an article, Ernest. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> confidence only gets you so far. Yeah, but without Ernest, skill, confidence like you so far. You know, you know what, what I'm mean? talking about. Yeah, but <laughs> she was looking straight at me, and I'm like, me? Yeah, what you, about? I was thinking, what did you do? <laughs> oh, my abs. <laughs> my belly I mean, to be fair, to, he got the job and was on national TV. Yeah. So it, it got him exactly where he wanted to go. So this article, the headline that grasped his attention was how small talk with almost strangers profoundly affects your happiness. So basically, you know, when you're just well, going about your everyday life and let's just say it's a Sunday, you just fancy 
I don't know, having a coffee. You don't have a coffee machine at home. So you go to the local shops and you see your local barista and you go, hey, Joe. And he goes, the usual. The right? usual. That type of relationship yep. apparently affects how happy you are as a person. I see that. And I can see those that. types of relationships have a name. So they're called weak ties. Weak ties? Yeah. Versus strong ties. That's so, like um, the bl- is it, uh, right side. Blind side. Strong um, side. <laughs> remember the Titans. I don't know what that is. Remember the Titans. Oh, I don't know. Hmm. But like, so a strong tie is like your spouse, your relative, whatever, um, sibling. That is a relative. Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> cousin, also relative, uncle, relative, mum and dad, relative. Whereas like a weak tie is an acquaintance, but it's not a total stranger. It's someone that you like recognize um, just from around and about. Um, just from familiarity. Familiarity. You might not, you wouldn't like, you might not know their name or anything like that. Like, you just recognize them. Like they're from your local yep. area. And it's just those relationships that profoundly affect your life. So think about like if you were to, uproot your whole life and move to like a new city, Alexander, for example, you've just done it. You wouldn't notice until you you've now done that and put yourself in a new situation, how much those weak ties actually affect you. So how important are you saying how important they are? are, Yes. How important they are because now you're in a new place, all your strong ties are gone, but you also have no weak ties at all. Right. Yeah. Isn't that's interesting, right? So I never thought about it because loneliness is obviously very number. bad. It's very physically bad. I think it's <laughs> just as bad on our lifespan as smoking and 100%. obesity, right? Yeah. Um, so th- that's where these weak ties come into play. But that's I just why that song that was works. Interesting. Which what? Which song? Lonely is it one is the loneliest number? Yes, is getting oh. me. That's a oh. song. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You've got it like a Britney Spears <laughs> thing, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> we can all judge you right now. Yes. You yes. Britney fan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> did you know the song? Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is Chuck, so do you funny. know the song? Killing me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know the song. Oh, so it's just you. I know Britney. the song. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to just sing more? I mean, do you... yes, please. Yes. <laughs> you go. Yes, Maxie. And do the dancing as well. Yes, Maxie. If you're gonna do, I do the whole he- thing. I want to hear you sing the main <laughs> the main line. What the? <laughs> I liked nah, that. That okay. was good. <laughs> that was really good. On, on the spot timing. Um, apparently, these weak ties are the ones that actually help us in life. All right, hang on a sec. Two. Can you name weak ties that you have right now? Yes. Yeah. Two. Do you want me to? <laughs> yes. Like who? Who are your? Who are your common weak ties? Well, your the common shop, weak ties. The, the guy down the road. Or I go to the shop. That's. I got a lot of places I buy food from I have weak ties there. I oh. I literally said this on the way into our building. Yeah, nice. So when I was with Kenny, what? um the guy who works at the I have no idea what his name is, who works on the front desk. But like because it's a twenty four seven building, there's a rotation them. I said to him, like, Oh look when we go in, we'll say hi and stuff. It's, it's always important to make sure you talk to people like that. And like when I was in Northampton when I went to Tesco, I would always say hi to the security guards every time I go in, yeah. regardless. You would always yes. say um, hello to your security guards. Yeah, yeah. I am I like say hi to everyone. So yeah, you have apparently the best way, because it actually says in that article, Dev, yes. the easiest way to, to make weak ties. So it says, you know, to start up a conversation, just co- like start by either giving them a compliment or commenting on something that you've both got in common. So like if you're walking your dog, you'd be like, oh, talk about the dog. Um, <laughs> or if you like, if it's at the gym or if you like see someone going into the same gym or Biceps. something like that. So try and find something you've got in common. How much you lift, bruv? <laughs> 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 Biceps. <laughs> I got those two. Gonna have, we're going to have Dev walking around the gym just going to How much do you lift? 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 You, know, you know, my my one of my workmates, he, he he left now, but like I go, how much do you lift? And he goes, the gym. And he walked away. I was like, what do you okay, mean? you got me. I, he lifts the gym. The whole gym. He just goes to the corner of the gym and lifts the whole building. Oh my yes. God. Again, he's got a partner called Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never thought about it that way. What do you lift? I lift gym all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So these 
we uh, are these just acquaintances is this just another word for acquaintance not even not no even they're not even acquaintances you might not know their name that's what it's saying it's just these tiny these small little conversations that you might have all make meaning so if you are someone that's lonely you might not have anyone around you at all like having a little 30 second you know back and forth with your local baker you know, Barista. it's going to just give you a little pep in your step. Barber. And then a Drug few dealer. meters down the road, you see, <laughs> you know, the window cleaner that you always see or whatever. Do you know I'm what I mean? So then what's the difference between an acquaintance and them? Well, an acquaintance is, is your friend, but not a close friend. It's so someone what, that you might uh, see My out acquaintances about. aren't my friends. That's why they're an acquaintance. That's what I'm they saying. It's be? like, well, you know their name. You It might be a friend of a friend or someone that you just happen to be in the same, like, so then this they do is, the same activity as so you. So this weak ties thing, I guess the reason I asked the question is, I, I used a bad example with the guy downstairs, but like, I tend to get the names of these people. Like my weak tie people. Um, I think I think what's probably the, what I would imagine is the defining factor is you get acquaintances which you might not speak, like people that I know, but I rarely ever see or speak to. But when I do see them, I'm like, okay, I'll speak to them. But weak ties, I imagine, are the ones which, like the shopkeeper, which you just see a lot all the time. You're really familiar with who they are. Like yep. you have a you have a feeling about them, like you have a proper feeling about them, but you don't actually know anything about them. Yeah, you know what I mean, that's 100%. how I see like a weak tie is different to an acquaintance. Like I might have an acquaintance okay. I met networking once. I don't really have much of a no, feel, like a strong feeling acquainted. of who they are, but I will speak yeah. to them about a certain subject. Yeah, uh, that's right. And also, they the can the weak ties are, ties are apparently the ones that can help you out in like <laughs> areas such as job seeking like so where your your strong ties your family will always just give you encouragement and stuff like that rarely they're able to put you in certain positions to propel you forward and whatever you're wanting to do whereas your weak ties you might have a little conversation about oh i want to do that or i'm trying to do that and they're like oh i know someone you know or i'll give your name to this person or why don't you call this person or whatever and then and they open opportunities does that and go that's from a weak network. tie to a medium tie to a strong tie no, because you're not hanging out with them. But they... no, but like because they because you've got this connection now. Or yeah, or that's it could what, be their this weak is where I'm getting confused like because like together. I feel like these like these weak Thai people. Like you're saying, if you see them every day and you have these little <laughs> conversations and that, like I know more about that person than I do about my acquaintances. Mm. What's no? a weak Thai person? You know more about weak you talk to them. Like, how can you how it can might... you not know more about someone you so, talk to than someone you don't talk to? Okay, when I'm saying talk to them, it's just like literally only talk to for the time it takes to make your coffee or whatever. Or they might only know your they might know your coffee order by heart because you're there all the time. Do you know what I mean? Not like you're sit around those, for half an hour having I, a chat. Again, this may just be the way that I interact with people, but your conversation with those people. Like every, because you talk to them so frequently, it develops. Like even though it's only a few, it might only be like a minute, but the things that you talk about, like develop. I you understand what Alex say, like, is saying. I get it. My, every time. my coffee lady, I think she's sixty. Oh man, she's old, right? Ooh. But like every time I walk in, <laughs> oh, oh, she the podcast. Every time she I spit in your coffee, <laughs> I don't go there anymore. <laughs> um, every time I go in there, she's already got the coffee made and that, and then. Like, I know when she's going on holidays. When I was going there, I knew she was going on holidays. When her, her daughter was coming from Melbourne. when uh, She just told me a lot about her yeah. personal stuff. So you don't go there anymore? I still think that's nah. a weak time. So there's one day, she made you coffee, and you never showed up for pick it up. I think so. You oh, asshole. Yeah. That poor I couldn't lady. afford coffee anymore, mate. I'm living off air sandwiches at the moment, mate. That's why I made this podcast, so I can make money. <laughs> Worth so more. Ooh, how's that going for you? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even on air sandwiches now. <laughs> so KFC is a great product. <laughs> hey, he's, his uh, his air sandwiches. He can now put a bit of wind on them as well. <laughs> um, uh, but this guy, this sort of, this sort of the worst joke ever. <laughs> I know. This, There's only one person I'm laughing at now. <laughs> this sort of led me to the question of work workmates. Like I find it, I always find it. I don't know why I find it funny, but you get a group of people to come together. One minute morning to work in a place. <laughs> like you wouldn't normally talk to these I people. Was charged. You wouldn't talk to any of these people, but they say you all come together now and work <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. I don't know you, but I have. Like if I met you down the street, I would say I would say nothing to you. I wouldn't say hello. I wouldn't give a shit about you. But and then we're all together now. And you spend and more time spend, there than you do at home. You gotta, yeah, yeah, you spend like 40 hours a week with these people 
that you would not normally talk to. I find it funny and weird, but this is ex- this is the thing we do. <laughs> this is what we that's do. why it's so important to I choose guess... good colleagues. Oh. Not just not just choose good colleagues, but choose a career path or something that you sort of have. Uh, I'm not doing to say passion because I don't think everyone's lucky enough to be able to do what they have a passion for, but like something that at least interests you because then you all have a common interest if everyone there is interested in it. Yeah. Versus true. just going to do anything. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The B-Side Word. Make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. bell.